Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 33 bringing you another exhibition match. This time, once again, we have Yogg Sadath and against Kube, who we haven't seen in some time. And it's going to be on Titan Duel. Oh, well, just get it started right now. Why not? It's a game to be played. Yogg Sadath, he's opening up with. Okay, he's going for light vehicles, opening up with Metal Extractor, though. And Kube, on the other hand, going for light vehicles. Titan Duel, of course, we've seen several times. A map where vehicles and tanks work very well. Usually the players will start out, get a couple scouts, and then try to go along both to the southwest and to the northeast. Both players try to do that. As well as trying to take the center as well. But the northeast and southwest are really... They're really good for the resources and also fairly safe. Not totally safe, but it's, if you can hold them, it's pretty hard to dislodge. They are at a corner. Now, Yogstoth continue to expand forward along the south side. He doesn't have any... He has some Masons coming up after these Scorchers. He's going for, looks like, moderate harass beforehand. Cuba, on the other hand, going for just light scouting. One dart meets up and does not just take any damage. So one dart and Mason. One dart, one Scorcher, one Mason. Yogstoth going for two darts, two Scorchers before a Mason. So he is apparently going to be a bit more aggressive. And the first dart coming in there, and it goes down. There's not much to that. Whereas for Yogstoth... Well, his second dart is coming in here. He's not... Okay, hit the start from Cubay also didn't do too much. Really, the first darts are for scouting. They aren't really for harassment. Especially since there are the, all these defenders around the metal extractors. That prevents a lot of harassment. Although, this one defender, not quite in range. The dart able to get in. Able to not quite get rid of the metal extractor. The Scorcher pushes it away. But still, it, it tried. It started. It was something, I suppose. Yogsdoth is moving into Scorchers. He, with these Scorchers, actually he has a lot of firepower coming in here. Cube does have a defender's advantage, though, he, and he does have the Scorchers of his own. Three Scorchers of his own against two from Yogsdoth, and Yogsdoth starting to get back more Scorchers, but one of them in his main base. Two of them coming in. The two of them are coming to to, to attack now, and one of them, not bad retreat micro, but unfortunately gets flanked out and completely destroyed. So that particular Scorcher. Not in the best position. It's kind of hard to really micro that out when you're on the side of the map. But Cube, nice flank there. Now just Morphing's Commander, by the way. Yogstoth had Morphed... Actually, he hasn't Morphed's Commander either. But given that he calls it new 1v1 meta, I'm guessing it's Light Particle Beam Auto Repair. Is what he has for level 1. We'll see what Cube has pretty quickly. And... Mason... Nice repair... Okay, nicely done. Repairing these Scorchers. That's very good to do. The... Scorchers might as well keep him alive. So at this point, Cubay has a massive unit advantage with Scorchers. One whole Scorcher! That's actually pretty big at this stage in the game. Actually, no. Yogstoth has four Scorchers, but he also doesn't have quite as much metal in his base from enemy Scorchers. So at this point, Cubay, okay, he's a slight by cost army disadvantage, but in terms of positioning right now, Cubay's got a bit of an advantage, but we'll see how it comes down to this battle. Comes down to how they micro it out when these Scorchers all meet up. Once that happens, we'll figure it out. And it looks like they are not going to meet up anytime soon. In fact, Yogstoth is trying to flank around Harass. Cubay is aware of what's going on. He does have radar over this. And he does have... Opening with Defender. His commander coming in here. Going to be able to... Well, chase off the Scorcher. That's all I can really do. But more Scorchers coming in to meet up. Cubay, nice... Nice positioning on his Scorcher. He's going to flank out Yogstoth's Scorchers. Very nice thing in there. Yogg's at the same time. Losing a dart here. So very nice positioning. Blocking those Scorchers from getting home. And Cubay can actually go in from here for a harassment. You can go for a very strong harassment, actually. The Scorchers have to chase after. And you do not want to chase Scorchers. Chasing Scorchers is the way to lose. And that is... Well, that's one whole Metal Extractor and Mason down for free. Cubay going to be able to get rid of another Metal Extractor. Keeping Yogg's down. At this point, Yogg's does have an economy advantage. But... Losing one more Scorcher. Losing this Lotus. Actually, this is a really bad spot. This is going to turn it around. I think Cube is going to lose lose his harassment from here, but still going to be able to get rid of one more Metal Extractor. If he does that, that's going to be... That's still going to be a powerful harassment. He did keep Yogg's somewhat down. Well, keep him, kept him honest, at least. I mean, at this point, Cube does need to expand more. He needs to get more Metal Extractors, but he did... He did even out the economy. Yogg's has some reclaim to work with. That is the one thing... But Cube, if he builds up metal extractors from here, actually he should have been building them up while he was attacking. That's the thing. He needs to build more metal extractors. He needs to build metal extractors to the north and kind of get to the center as well. Yogstoth, however, is expanding very nicely along the center. He's 
not yet setting up much, but he does have, you point out, he does have a nice little wall of the Solar Collector. So the Solar Collector with Defender as well and every single Metal Extractor. Just one on each, but still, that is a nice wall. Cubay doing something similar, but without the, the Solar Collectors aren't quite in the same position. They aren't quite acting as walls. Important thing to keep in mind, Solar Collectors are basically walls in this game. Anyway, yogg is... Yeah, is keeping nice control of the center of the map. He does have... Once again, he does an economic advantage. I don't think he's actually reclaiming at this point. Just economic advantage. Rebuilding the metal extractors. Rebuilding everything he had there. More Scorchers coming in. Cubay is coming down here with a very nice Scorcher attack. And it's not going to do too well, though. Unfortunately, he is driving right into everything that yogg had. yogg I don't think he lost a single... No, he lost one Scorcher. Lost exactly one Scorcher and gained six, scor six Scorcher corpses worth of reclaim. So yogg pushing very far ahead. And Cubay now has to deal with all these Scorchers coming in for counterattack. There's not much to defend against this. I don't know if yogg is aware, but he could just rush in right now and get rid of Cubay's commander. By the way, Shotgun Auto Repair, so I was almost right. Not Light Particle Beam, but still, two Masons go down for free. And yogg has the North as well. So at this point... All the control, all the map control is going to Yogstoth. He has half the map easily, probably more than that. Probably really has the southwest as well. It's hard to get rid of that. It's hard to, sorry, hard for Cubay to secure that at this point. So Cubay is really falling behind at this. Now he's falling behind. Now he's not necessarily going to stay behind though. A leveler coming in, and he is building more levelers to try to deal with these scorchers. It's not going to work out too well though. He needs to have the levelers at range. That's the one thing. Scorchers work best at very short ranges and. That was not playing to the leveler's strengths there. However, last Scorcher is going to go down, and I think it it's not going to take down this with it. And another Scorcher attack coming in from the west side as well. Wow, tearing apart a lot of Cubase base. Tearing apart mo Okay, let's just tearing apart a Lotus and a Radar Tower. Not the biggest deal, but right now... No, Cubase fine. He's, lo he's lost a bit of Radar, but not all that much. And that Defender is finishing off the last Scorcher. So right now it's somewhat evened out of it, but Yogg's having a better economy, having the caretakers to push all that metal into his factory, getting more and more scorchers, while while Cubay on the other hand pushing heavily for levelers. I'm guessing Yogg's is going to switch over to Ravagers pretty quickly once he sees that, either once he's full leveler or just once he gets the caretakers up, he might just push to full Ravager, just to counter those levelers out. We'll see though. The levelers are coming forward and actually. Oh, Cubay's jumping the gun on that one. He's going for Ravagers first. So the Ravager Wars are going to start with Cubay, not going to start with yogg countering the levelers. yogg continuing to build up the center of the map, and he's... Oh, his Scorchers are not in a great position. This leveler is just about to get to him, but he does spot it in time. He has radar over most of the map, by the way, so he spots it well in time before it becomes a problem. And it looks like... These Scorchers are going to just go around to the south, southwest side of the map. This is what I was talking about. Hard to control the side of the map for Cubay. He's actually staying pretty close economically despite this. Although, now with the reclaim starting to be taken, it's going to be problematic. And Levelers and Ravagers are being built up. Yogg's is joining into the level of Ravager War. At this point, Cubay does have the advantage of Ravagers. He does have four Ravagers, and right now Yogg's has none. What matters, though, is when they actually meet up. And they're... Those scorchers here. These scorchers are going to be, these scorchers are going to be a possible problem. If Yogstoth uses them right, he can get rid of the Ravagers before they even. Well, okay, it's a matter of dodging the levelers. But the thing is, the Ravagers don't do well against scorchers. So with his own levelers and Ravagers, if he gets rid of Cubay's levelers, he could probably deal with the Ravagers with the scorchers, and that would leave Cubay very vulnerable. Now Cubay is moving to the north. He is attacking to the north, coming into the Ravagers to take out the north base. And at the same time, levelers are coming in for Yogstoth to deal with this. And these levelers are not really the best thing to use here. Going to be able to deal with the other leveler, but the Scorchers are the big story here. They are coming in, and they're going to deal with they're going to deal with these Ravagers pretty well. This is what I was talking about. If they avoid the levelers, then the Scorchers deal with the Ravagers. One of the Ravagers, actually, no, the Ravagers are able to push them away, killing a couple Scorchers in the process. And Cubay is actually going to start. Pushing north. This Stardust is the only... That's the only obstacle in his way. That's it. Once that's gone, he's gone. Now, on the other hand, Yogg-Sothoth... He is trying to stop the southwest. He is actually probably trying to take the southwest. 
And Morphing as well, he's got range and speed on top of Auto Repair and Beam Laser. The Yogg's just trying to push as best he can outwards and make sure that this base is taken. Cubey retreating with the levelers, but at the same time, the Ravagers going to the north, taking out the Metal Extractors, taking out the Stardust soon after, and a bunch of a bunch of Scorchers and the levelers behind them. I think I'm going to take out the Ravagers, but not before the Ravagers finish off everything here. One of the Ravagers does go down to a Stardust. Actually, two Ravagers go down to a Stardust. Possibly not quite three, but two go down. And Cubey's Commander... Cubey's Commander about to die. In fact, this is it. That's Cubey's Commander down. So Cubey is no longer even. He was holding even thanks to the commander, but now that is no longer the case. And yogg pushes forward to the north and tries to make sure that Kyube at least can't take the north. He can he can remove the north from yogg control, but he can't take it for himself. At this point, however, yogg flanking on both sides. This Scorcher going to go down. The leveler in a very nice position. The other Ravagers have to be pushed away because they just don't have the numbers. And at the south, though, Ravagers are harassing, getting rid of Kyube's Metal Extractors here. At this point, Yogstoth having a 2-1 to economy advantage and nearly a 2-1 to army advantage. It's not quite a matter of pushing in quite yet, but it's getting close. Positioning is still important, but it's getting close. And Kyube trying to deal with this, has to retreat, has to move these levelers, or these Ravagers rather, out of the way, getting away from Yogstoth's Ravagers, and not quickly enough. He's lost focus on these Ravagers, and they're all going down for free. Cubey was focused too much on the south side of the map and lost two Ravagers for nothing. That's a lot of metal donation to Yogstoth. Just point out that neither player has actually gone for a fax switch at this point. Both players are just pushing heavily into their vehicle factories. Neither player is trying to focus on going beyond that. I'm a little bit surprised Cubey's not going for Dominatrix, honestly. Not entirely surprised, but I'm a little bit surprised just given the numbers difference that he hasn't gone for you know, four or five Dominatrices as support in the rest of his army, just to turn Yogstoth's army advantage against him. However, that doesn't appear to be happening, which honestly is probably fine. They are annoying units. But still, that they're annoying for a reason. And there's the fact switch, actually. Air repair pad on top of an airplane plant. Nothing being built yet for Yogstoth, but he does have the factory. And nice levelers coming in here from Cube along the south side. There is a Mason coming in, reclaiming the south, reclaiming all the wrecks here. There's a few Masons that are... Well, one we're claiming the rest building metal extractors along the south side, so Cubey is trying to take that. Same time, though, Ravagers coming in here for Yogg'Sothoth. A bunch of Ravagers coming down here. They are taking out all the Lotuses. The metal extractor is going to go down soon after, and Yogg'Sothoth has no opposition here. Cubey has nothing to defend in the north. He has a bit to defend in the south. His commander... No, it's Yogg'Sothoth's commander. His commander. Cubey's commander is dead. We saw that already. But Yogg'Sothoth's commander, speed, armor, auto repair, and... Ravagers coming in to get rid of these last Masons as well to stop them from expanding right before the Metal Extractor's done, too. That was just metal for nothing. Cubey spent all that metal for no gain. And Yogg'Sothoth getting a Caretaker in the center of the map. At this point, Yogg'Sothoth, he's had the game for a little while now, but he definitely has it now. Cubey gonna go for one last push, though. Gonna try to get rid of the Commander, and now the Commander... Radar Jammer and Personal Cloak as well. But yeah, there's no way he's gonna go down that easily. Moving back, getting out of the way, and the Ravagers trying to do what they can to it, but they have to be pushed back. They cannot go through that many defenders easily. Yogg'Sothoth, his commander is almost impenetrable at this point. Or if not his commander, his entire base. His commander, there's some weakness if air came up, for example, but as we can see, the only air that exists is Yogg'Sothoth's bunch of shadows. I'm guessing he's going to go for hitting every single mechs, but I don't know. I haven't seen any players actually do that. I think it's a really good idea. And have your shadows just simultaneously hit all the mechs on the map that your opponent controls. And Yogg'Sothoth, right now, doesn't have quite enough radar to know where they all are. That's the one thing. He should find out where they all are, but even if he doesn't know that they're there, he should at least target all the places the mechs could be. Keep an eye on the shadows when they get nearby, make sure the mechs are actually targeted, and then... That should be game. And Dominatrix! Okay, there we go. There is a Dominatrix. Just one. Should be at least three or four, but... No, it should be at least three or four. This is not going to work out too well for Cube, I'm afraid. Yogg'Sothoth has taken the southwest side of the map as well. The northeast side is nobody's, but the southwest side is Yogg'Sothoth's. And this is the last stand. Cube going for it. Going with the Dominatrix in the back, trying to take what he can. Gonna be able to take one of the Ravagers, actually, and that's one Ravager, but that Dominatrix getting hit hard by the Shadows. Not able to do anything there. And at this point, Yogg'Sothoth just moving in for the kill. A lot of Ravagers coming in for Yogg'Sothoth, and they are just going to finish everything off. 
Yogstoth's commander coming in to help out, but even then, it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, Yogstoth, he has a level 4 commander. That means he's he knows he's won. He has already won, he knows it. He just hasn't actually pushed in yet. It's just that Kyubei hasn't surrendered yet. But Yogstoth moving around the side, and that's going to be it. Kyubei, not even with a GG, just surrenders out of the game. And that is the game. So, thank you for watching. I'm not sure if I'm going to have another game after this. I'm going for an hour and a half. Let's see. I think I can. So I will be back shortly with the last game for tonight, so stay tuned.